What did you see last night, sir? Last night I saw um, a red Mustang pull up to the car, fired two shots, took off north on La Brea, turned around, headed southbound on La Brea, stopped right in front of the shooter's, the victim's car, took a look, and then took off down the street. Mm -hmm. And what about the white car that, that's in question? The, the white car was following the red car, but just kept straight, turned around, and came back southbound on La Brea. So it's possible that it was two cars involved in the shooting? Yes. Okay. Based off of what you've seen and from your area, uh, did it seem like he was uh, at that time? Or did anybody else was anybody else in the car with him? Yes, he was. Okay. Do you know if there was one or two other people in the car with him? At the time, I saw one other person, but then I saw two people. So it was uh, okay. So it was two, three in at, his car. At least together. three. Yes. Okay. okay. We always move as a unit. We do everything together, and this one time. Well, we let the unit fall. Like, I'm not gonna say the unit failed, but the unit just didn't do this one thing as a unit this time. And somebody took that, that chance that they always wanted, or whoever it may be. They, they obviously had a something against him, somebody. So they just went at it when we let the unit. Okay, so trouble at the moment. When I heard about it, I was driving at the time. I just almost ran a red light. Um, it just hurts so bad to just hear that come out of somebody's mouth. Oh, you didn't know Monte got shot? No, I didn't know that I wasn't around him. It just killed me on the inside. I, I almost did it 120 on the way to the studio, but probably Rob told me to go home. So I just went home and just, just slept on it. I woke up and saw the news. I just broke out in tears. Like, I can't believe this. Like, we were just on the news, dug in with the dude that was saying him going was shot. It was just crazy to me. Like, it seemed like everything happened so fast, like, I felt like I was just on the news. I was back on the news for something terrible. I remember the first time we heard just from Robert Dunn on the radio, his bomb was dancing in the street. In the middle of the street, just on the radio, you know, it's it was like a movie, man, you know. It was, I mean, you know, as an artist, you know what I'm saying, if you don't know, anybody out there understands and never had any artistry, Whenever you hear yourself for the first time on the radio or a video, you feel it as something else, you know. For, for me to be on the outside, you know, looking at them, enjoy that. It was like, man, you know, you know, looking at my baby, open up her toys on Christmas, you know. Because mm -hmm. the bond was so strong, you know. And we come a long ways in a short time and built something real big, like, we probably created the most monumental movement of a dance since the Macarena, you know. So, you know, for him to be cut down this short like this is a tragedy, you know, but all we can do is turn it over to God, you know what I'm saying, and let him guide us, you know, to the necessary piece, places where the pieces are so we can find those pieces and keep this thing together and keep doing what we're doing. I feel what they put together was good because all the young people and older people was like they saw the love and the things. And so it had to surprise you, obviously, that someone would do this to it. Yes, it did. Look at the one next to you. See that we are related. We are related. Now you see my shirt? It's a very clear message. That's what we're about. It's time for us to take ourselves out of this nightmare. Nobody can do it for us. It's something we must do for ourselves. It's in our spirit. You know this hurts. You know how many times I've been out here on this front line. If you see my face, you know what I do. You know my message I bring. There's nothing new for me to tell you. Except it's family business. And we're killing ourselves. And nobody cares about it except you. When your friend dies. We have to carry that message everywhere we go. Every neighborhood we go into, don't kill yourself. As he's dying over here, somebody just like him is dying across town. It's a spiritual sickness. It's not okay. Killer went home, didn't he? Somebody told him it's 
all right, homie. You can come in. It's all right with us. Tell me, is that all right with you? Hello. See, because you got to want this to stop. You. It's your peer group guy. I have the statistics. He falls in the target age. God bless him. He didn't do anything but be his age. The highest mortality in our community is 18 years old. You hear me? 18. Not even getting to the 21st birthday. What are we doing? What are we going to do about it? Young brothers, tell me. The sisters is crying. The mothers is crying. Young homies, what are we going to do? Young girlfriends, what are you going to do to help them? It's not okay to say next. It's not okay to say sorry next. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. And each one here knows it. Each one of you knows it. I'm not telling you anything new. You got to fight to live. You got to fight to live. And this baby is proof. He's proof. And he did all the right things. Yet we're housing somebody that didn't think he deserved it. We're hiding him. So I tell you witnesses, if you saw something, drop that dime. Don't use your cell phone if you don't want to get involved. Use a pay phone. But drop that dime. Tell on them. Don't go get justice yourself because you forfeit your life and your family does too. We got to make a stop. So get this killer out of our neighborhood until he comes back here and kills somebody else. Protect your children. Love each other like I see in your face. And I see the love you have for him. I see it. And he deserves to stay here. He deserves to be here and share that love with you. So if you're tired of burying your friends, join us. Cease fire. Help us make a difference for you in you. Please, come to our meeting. Call me up. I got a show on radio called Game Talk. We come on every Thursday and talk about this. Same way I'm talking to you right now. We in the for real. This ain't no joke. This ain't no fantasy. And it's time for us to take care of our business. God bless each and every one of you here. Get on this train to freedom. Get on it today. Don't wait till they hit your family. If you sick and tired of our young people getting killed, just say yes. Yes. Are you ready for change? Just say yes. Yes. My name is Eddie Jones, E-D-D-I-E-J-O-N-E-S, President of the Los Angeles Civil Rights Association. Monte, who was finally known as M. Bone, had a civil right to live, a human right to live, a constitutional right to live, and a private right to live. And that right was stolen away last night right here. Here's a young man who fixed himself up, turned his life around, became a great dancer, a great rapper, and a great entertainer who traveled around the United States performing his arts. Why his life was stolen away, well, we just can't begin to figure it out. But we, one of the things that we're upset about today is the hatred and the anger that's going on in our community. So we stand today in solidarity. We stand today in truth. We stand today with our constitutional right that says that we have the right to live, the right to exercise our rights. Monte was a great young man, a very talented young man. There's no story out here going about gangbanging. Okay, we ain't to, every time they come, the media comes, they say it was a gang member. Monte was not a gang member, he was an entertainer. Entertainers, those are the syllables. Look at the spirit of people that just came out spontaneously today. What does that tell you about Monte? The fact that the love that's shown, I mean, the numbers really tell it. People came from all over today because they understand one thing he's not dead. His spirit is still very much alive. Not just an entertainer, not just someone who was an artist. He was all of that, but he was much more. And you can see that from the people here. You can see it from the love of the family. The 
fact is, he was also a positive young role model for so many young people. We oftentimes hear in our community gangbangers, thugs, drive-by shooters, but that's not the case because that's what they say. But we know that there are so many positive, productive young men in our community that are doing positive, productive, positive things. And we can see that with Monte. We can see that with the spirit. We can see that with the love that's here. I mean, when you have these many people in the mind, and that really are here because of him, what does that tell you? It tells you that this is a young man that was not only respected in the community, that was not only respected by his peers, but certainly loved by his family, but also said something else, that someone whose memory and legacy is not going to be forgotten. Hey!